This is Michael Osterlink, and I'm speaking with Pete Sepp. He's Executive Vice President of the National Taxpayers Union. Good afternoon, Pete. Good afternoon. Now, Pete, we've been working together on a working group of conservatives and libertarians uh, in creating a top priority list of transparency and accountability measures we like to see the next administration or the new administration and the next Congress implement. And le the legislation would be for the Congress, and, and obviously whoever the president, in this case it might be Romney, could implement through the various agencies. Two issues of great concern for you. One is whistleblower protections, and I know that's something you've been a stalwart defender of and working tirelessly on the Hill in support of, of protecting whistleblowers. Yes. And the other is uh, making uh, regulatory reform transparency um, something to be highlighted and implemented at the agency level. Let's talk about whistleblower protections first. Why your interest in whistleblower protections? Well, interestingly enough, my organization was co-founded by a government whistleblower fellow named Ernie Fitzgerald, who was in the Air Force at the time and exposed problems with the C-5 transport, a gigantic aircraft that the Lockheed Corporation was building. And for doing that, he was basically assigned to what are called turkey farms during his career. He was auditing bowling alleys in Thailand, for example. Our friend from the Government Accountability Project regaled us with that tale. Funny on the one hand, but very disturbing on the other. The fact is that folks inside the federal government who have credible information on waste, fraud, and abuse are the taxpayers' best friends. And when we review the history of National Taxpayers Union's legislative battles, whistleblowers have had a key role in many of them. And in fact, one of the best achievements of my professional career at NTU was participating in, certainly not leading, but being a participant in the IRS Restructuring and Reform Act of 1998. What that did, as its name implies, is take the entire bureaucratic structure of the IRS, reform it, reshape it, overhaul it, make it into something that was more focused on customer service than law enforcement, and it led to some real differences in the way the IRS treated its citizens. Well, we had been involved in three separate efforts to reform the IRS, the Restructuring and Reform Act being the third one. The two previous efforts really didn't succeed because it focused on trying to reform from the outside in. It was whistleblowers within the IRS that were able to provide the testimony, the concrete guidance, the directions for reform on the third package that really made the difference. That's just one example of how whistleblower protection is taxpayer protection. It's why we support it. They need to know that they don't have to risk their professional lives, uh, their family's livelihood, and all of the work that they've built up just for pointing out whenever government is breaking the law or bending the law or mangling tax dollars in the process. Now, you and I have been working tirelessly with a, a wide group of, of other organizations in support of the present day bill that's both before the House and the Senate. Talk to us about some of the provisions within that bill that you'd like to see implemented in terms of law and the changes to protect these whistleblowers. Well, what we have in S-743, the bill that is trying to move through Congress now, are protections from retaliation on the job by supervisors and the like against whistleblowers with credible information. We have also the establishment of new channels and stronger channels within the inspector general offices of government to help address whistleblower concerns. Those are very important. Now, what we don't have in there, of course, are the comprehensive protections and channels of communication for national security whistleblowers. Obviously, we as a taxpayer group are concerned with the fiscal policy aspects, but even in national security, you have huge so-called black budgets where money is getting spent with very little accountability, and so those national security provisions are going to be very important after S-743 passes. And of course, <laughs> even S-743, we cannot simply say it's a given that it's going to pass. It's going to take a lot of work to push that over the goal line in this Congress. Now, one of the things you've done over the past year 
uh, if not longer, is to help organize the center-right conservative groups in support of whistleblower protection. And you put together a letter uh, probably over, a little over a year ago um, that has some prominent conservative groups on. And it's been a great tool for us when we're on the Hill to show Republican yes. staffers that you know this is strongly supported on the center-right. Talk yes. about the letter and some of the groups that you got to support. Well, based on our history with the whistleblower issue, we thought that many other organizations from a fiscally conservative perspective would support legislation like S743 as well. So we began asking them to co-sign an open letter to Congress stating principles from the fiscally conservative standpoint of why whistleblower protection is so important. We were able to enlist 15 groups on the first round of signatories. We've since had the group Less Government join us. Now these 15 groups run the gamut from Council for Citizens Against Government Waste to Americans for Tax Reforms, Center for Fiscal Accountability, a whole gamut of organizations. And what we outlined in our letter were some of the more common misconceptions and misperceptions among Republican lawmakers, especially of this issue. There was this notion that, well, if we grant more protections to whistleblowers, that's just going to encourage malingerers within the federal government to wrap the whistleblower protection status around themselves and say, you can't touch me, I want to be a lazy worker the rest of my life. Well, that's certainly not the case. Whistleblowers who come forward are already taking a major courageous step and risking their careers. There are many other ways for malingerers to get along in the federal government. Becoming a whistleblower certainly isn't one of them. We also address the notion that this would somehow clog the courts with a lot of cases just by giving certain due process rights at the end of the line of a whistleblower's experience. Well, we were able to draw upon our own experience with taxpayer rights and court remedies, and we wanted to convey the message that, look, just because you have the ability to go to court to stand up for your career if you're a whistleblower doesn't mean you will always exercise it. It's a very expensive proposition. It's there because it's part of a multi-layered process. It encourages actually settlements and better behavior uh, among the actors in government at the lower levels, the administrative levels. And we also talked about uh, issues of cost, whether there's more government administrative overhead here, there really isn't. And when you weigh that against the massive savings to taxpayers that can accrue just because of the information that gets unearthed here, this is definitely a win-win proposition for good government as well as fiscally responsible government. Uh, another issue on our top priority list for uh, at the new Congress and the new administration in 2013 is regulatory reform transparency, and I know that's something that you're very interested in. Uh, can you talk briefly about your interest in that and like what you'd like to see changed? Well, the Office of Information and Regulatory Affairs, as well as the Office of Management and Budget, have long been under executive orders to disclose all information during the proceedings they go through in evaluating the costs and benefits of a given regulation. Well, the left of center community is saying that there's been inadequate attention paid by a number of presidential administrations to this and that what we might see if there were more transparency in the process is revelations of financial conflicts of interest, uh, perhaps large companies trying to influence the process. Well, I actually support the cause of transparency, but I think there's going to be a different outcome here. I think that with more disclosure, we're going to see something quite different. We're going to see politicized rulemaking from agencies like the Environmental Protection Agency with very left of center agendas, very extremist agendas. We're going to see diffidence, uh, even carelessness over the costs to the private sector of things like tax regulations. Now obviously the immediate issue at hand and the executive orders won't necessarily impact the IRS directly, but it will filter through the federal bureaucracy. That's what we have to keep doing here is establishing a culture of transparency 
at a few agencies, and then that culture takes root and spreads throughout the agency structure. We need to get going on this because the federal government risks being once again labeled as the technological laggard. I mean, you can find information about so many things online. President Barack Obama said himself when he was a senator, transparency is not a left or right issue, it's a right or wrong issue. Well, now that he's president, he's not been making sufficient progress on that kind of philosophy. And again, he's right at its core, this is not an ideological issue, it shouldn't be. On the other hand, once these folks get into power, especially in the executive branch, they have this urge to just clamp down on information, almost out of fear that the public might see a process that's very messy. I hope they see it, and I hope the public recognizes that Costs and benefits need to be weighed, not just by the so-called experts, but by the people who are going to pay the bills, the businesses, and the individuals. Thank you, Pete.